is the left brain any given second. You know, it's just like, boom, you know, it's just like no problem. The left brain has to kind of grind it through. So that's like the difference between, um, you know how like, uh, ever watch like uh, shows like um, Monk, you know? Um, I haven't. Oh, okay. Uh, well, it shows about people who they just all of a sudden they just like, boom, they have the answer to, you know, some question and they, it's hard for them to break it down into analytical bits about, you know what, it wasn't that they reached that conclusion by going, well, A, then B, then C means it must be D and therefore you know, blah, 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 and using that whole logical stream to then reach a conclusion. They just had the conclusion without going through that thought. And that's that's the difference between the right brain and the left brain, is that the right brain tends to have the conclusion, and it, it didn't have to get there by slowly going through all of the different logical steps to get there. I think it would be incredible to be able to give speed and give rise to people being able to indwell in the right side of their brain more. Oh, absolutely. Because I mean, a universe to me of creativity would explode and people would be happier too. Don't you oh, think? I, oh yeah. No, I, the, the, yeah, I absolutely. I think that the, the left brain is kind of like, um, it's, it's like the difference between, you know, analog and digital, you know, and, and, and then, you know, the difference, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, it's like one of them is just so, you know, takes a lot of capacity and space to store information and to process it, and the other is just like, boom. Well, the next thing is actually the quantum the quantum computer is what people have talked about. And the quantum computer can consider all possibilities all at once and then spit out what's the best possible answer. Well, our brain can do that, but we have not been developing that part of our brain. We've been developing our, the part of our brain that's more like, you know, the logic driven digital brain, you know, that's just slowly slugging through, you know, all of the things. <laughs> but we actually have that capacity to have the answer without having to go through all the steps. Fabulous. How do we fast track that? <laughs> I want the quantum brain activated in full. <laughs> How do I do it? How do we do it? I'm ready. <laughs> You're ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please turn on the ignition? Thank you. <laughs> Well, it's, it's, it's so, it's so, you know, this is the thing that gets me is that, see, our educational system doesn't promote that. I know. And it's just so it's, sad. It's, it's so possible. I mean, I used to get in trouble back when I was in college and I was taking physics courses because I would write down the, an I, rem I remember the first physics course I took, I, I wrote down the answers and the physics professor thought I must be cheating because he didn't see me like writing down on the, you know, on the test, all of the, you know, how I got there, you know, like, you know, blah, 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 you know, and then boom, this is the answer. And so he thought that I might have copied the answer off of somebody else. So I remember staying after class and I said, give me another physics question. I'll show you. I, this is just how my brain works. I'm able to, like, get the whole thing in a flash, and I, I, I didn't realize that you're supposed to write down every single step and try to slow down your brain and, and, and work it through that way, you know. Um, and so he, he gave me various questions, and I solved them. I proved to him on the chalkboard. I was like, okay, blah, blah, blah. And he's like, wow, you're right. You, okay, of course you didn't cheat. He's like, you just have one of those brains where somehow you, like, don't need to go through all those steps. And I said, no, I mean, it just seems like a waste of time, you know. <laughs> but so I can do that right brain, left brain shift, but um, the reality is that I think a lot more of us can do that. It's just that our culture, it, it doesn't try to train us to do that. Doesn't enhancing the right side of the brain open up the field of receptivity 
and intuition and strengthen the intuitive faculty in us? Is that correct? Oh, absolutely. Okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. So exciting. I could go hours with you. But you spoke about an example of Saint Peregrine. Oh, yes, yes. And the patron saint of prayer, yeah. Yeah, let's talk about the studies about healing and prayers. I thought that was fascinating. Okay, Um, yeah, it's... um, Who was this Randolph Bird, this cardiologist? What did he do? He had 393 patients, and he was at a San Francisco hospital, and some type of project was done. Yeah, well, well, see, this is... Let me... Let me just, um, rather than like discuss that study in specific, okay. let me just say, you know, this whole um, this whole research area of prayer and you know healing is one that really is very fascinating, and it's one that's been very controversial. It makes it to the press. Um, you know, the press is very you know, quick to jump on the fact that there was a study that came out of Harvard that showed that some people who um, were in the control group for being prayed for actually did worse than those that were not being prayed for. And so it's, it's a really fascinating area that tells us the complexity of what we're dealing with when we try to do experiments in this area because the reality is that when you ha- when you conduct a, an experiment and you want to see the effect of prayer on healing, it's really hard to do a controlled experiment because you cannot go out there and tell everybody who knows that person who's got whatever illness, don't pray for this person because they're part of this control group and therefore you can't pray for them. <laughs> uh, we only want people to pray for them who are... Um, part of this study. You can't do that. It's ethically incorrect. So what happened was is that in these studies, you have people, Larry Dossie's done a lot of work on on the efficacy of prayer and medicine. Um, He felt that it's actually malpractice to not utilize prayer. Um, And then you also have, you know, the study that came out of Harvard where people said, that they actually started to feel like they did worse, and they were asked, why, why, you know, why did you do worse when you were being prayed for? And they said, I figured I must really have a bad illness if people are praying for me. (laughs) There's a psychological impact of knowing you're being prayed for. So... Uh, so you have to, you know, you have to factor out, you know, the psychological impact of knowing how you're being, that you're being prayed for. And some people are going to take that as a positive and it's going to assist them to know they have all that support and whatnot. And then there are going to be other people who take it as a negative and they're going to think, oh my God, I must really be bad off if people are praying for me. And so to me, it brings us back to the mind-body connection of how much our own perceptual, um, you know, sort of, uh, our, our own perception and our, our mind-body connection plays a role in healing. If, if we perceive people praying for us as a positive thing, then it will assist in our healing. If we perceive it as a negative thing, a sign of something, oh, my God, things are really bad, then it actually may not have a positive effect, which is really interesting. So then you have to do these studies in which people are blind to whether or not they're prayed for or not prayed for. And if you do it blindly, in which people don't know whether or not extra people are praying for them, then actually the evidence has shown that they actually do do better. You know, so... That's fascinating. Yeah, and, and, and so then I looked at it and I said, okay, this mind-body connection, it already tells us that consciousness is acting as a physical force, a physical matter, right? If it's happening remotely, which is me praying for my uncle that lives in Connecticut or whatever, um, then, you know, that's that's like a remote healing. But if I'm believing that 
you know, if I'm having positive thoughts and, and believing that um, I can heal myself,